Of the many properties of chemicals and physical systems, one that's usually fairly easy for us to think about and to measure is color. The way we're going to measure color is by using an instrument called a spectrophotometer. The spectrophotometers we have in lab right now are very good at giving us not just an idea of what the color is, but some very quantitative aspects of color. Because I can look at this particular solution and say that it's green, but what does that green tell me? What does that tell me about the chemicals that make this substance up? And if this were a chemical reaction, what does that color tell me about how the chemical reaction is proceeding? So what can a spectrophotometer do for us? Whenever we're looking at the color of a substance, color that we observe is really an interaction between light and some sort of molecule. Depending how the light and the molecule interact, we observe different colors. So there are a couple things that will affect that. First of all, it's just the nature of the molecule. That makes sense. If something is red, it's red. But there are a few other things that we need to monitor, that we need to keep track of. The first thing that we need to think about is path length. Now path length is the amount of substance that light has to travel through before it exits. And if we think about spectroscopy or spectrometry, what we're really looking at is, in the case of visible light, the probability that light is going to interact with a particle that will absorb it. So one of the ways we can, we can modify that, one of the ways we can, can change that is by looking at something called path length. Just how thick is the substance we're looking at. To get a better idea of path length, let's take a look at a, at a little bit larger scale system so we can really get a, a feel for that. Here's a cell that we can use to take a look at path length. You can see I've got red in there. Again, that's just red food coloring in water. And if we look at the geometry of this cell, it's 15 centimeters long and 3 centimeters wide. So path length, or the amount of substance that light has to travel through, if I'm going through this direction, the light has to travel through a lot more liquid. That means that it's much more likely that that light is going to interact with a particle that's in the solution. If I go through this direction, there's only about one-fifth the amount of liquid. There's only about one-fifth the probability that I'm going to interact with a, a solute particle, one of the particles that's making this particular solution look red. So this is an important thing to remember when we're looking at path length. And it's really pretty intuitive. Most people have at some point or another looked through some really thick water in a lake, in an ocean, in a, in a video. And the thicker the water, the more color you see in the water. So let's just take a look here. If I come around to this edge, so I'm looking through the long direction now. And I've got a piece of white paper back there just for some visual reference. There is the red that we're seeing in that direction. And remember, that's going through 15 centimeters of liquid. If I come around, and again, I've got my paper back there. If I come around and look at the same solution from this direction, well, it's still red, certainly, but it's much less intensely red than it was in the other direction because the path length is shorter. So path length affects how much light is absorbed or how intense the color of something is. Now for our samples and for our experiments, the path length is pretty well defined by what we keep or what we put our solution in when we observe it. So with these spectrometers, these spectrometers all use 
small one centimeter cuvettes. So the path length, let's see if that's easier to see against a white background. The path length in these cuvettes is determined by the size of the cuvette. And these are nominally one centimeter. So you can see on the cuvette, let's see if this shows up, that shows up pretty well. There are two sides that have some markings and some lines on them that aren't very transparent. There are two sides that are very clear. So always have to make sure that we're shining light through the clear faces when we want to do this type of an experiment and not turning it and shining it through the, the pattern faces because that will definitely cause some trouble. So that's what our sample is going to be held in, a small little plastic, these are plastic cuvettes. Um, so let's take a look at how to get those set up in the experiment. Here's the SpectraVis Plus. This is the spectrophotometer that we're going to be using in lab. As far as instruments go, there isn't a whole lot here to worry about. There aren't any switches or dials or settings on the instrument. All we really have is a sample holder and a whole bunch of technology that's inside the box and does all of its work without us really doing anything to it. So if we look at the sample holder, there are a couple little pictures here that tell us what's going on inside that sample holder. The triangle is the side where the detector is. So whatever light we pass through our sample is going to go through our sample and into the detector. So this is where all of the actual work happens. After the light comes through, the detector is going to process things and, and figure out what we've got. The other three sides of our square sample so, or sample holder each are light sources. Now this particular instrument is capable of doing some fluorescence measurements as well. For fluorescence measurements you need to shine light in 90 degrees from the, from the detector. So we've got a green light up here, we've got a purple light down here. We're not going to be doing fluorescence right now. All we're worried about or all we're going to be doing at this point is white light spectroscopy, so spectrophotometry. So here's the white light. The white light is going to come in from this direction. It's going to shine through our sample and go into the detector. Now remember when we look at our cuvettes, our sample cells, two sides across from each other are patterned so they're cloudy. Notice you, can't, you can see that there's a word behind that but you can't really see it well. The other two sides are clear. We can read right through them. The clear sides are the ones that we need to have light passing through for this experiment. So whenever we're putting the cuvette, whenever we're putting our sample in the instrument, the two clear sides have to be the sides that are passing white light through. So that's really the only thing about the instrument itself that you have to be careful of. Make sure you're putting your sample in so that the white light is going through a clear face and it's coming out a clear face to get into the detector. Because the SpectraVis Pro runs everything through the computer, we need to get things set up over here. So let's go up to the Chemistry and Physics folder and we want to use Logger Pro just like we do for pretty much all of our other instruments in lab. So let's double click on Logger Pro. When it opens up it should recognize that there's a SpectraVis Pro connected to it. So right now it thinks there's no device and it recognized it. Now the default will come up with this visible spectrum on the screen which which is fine it can be a little bit distracting so first of all I'm gonna open that up so that we're just looking at the visible part of the spectrum for parts of this experiment keeping that up on the screen is gonna be great for parts of this experiment that's gonna be really distracting so if you'd like to turn that off you can right click in the screen and go to graph options once you're in graph options, draw visible spectrum, 
unclick that and it's off. So for a lot of experiments this is going to be a lot more pleasant to look at. Um, but for the first part of this week's experiment, for this first experiment, it's actually kind of handy to have that visible spectrum up on the screen. So let's go ahead and put it up on the screen. Before we can collect any real data, we're going to have to calibrate the instrument. Now, one of the nice things here is if I go ahead and hit collect without calibrating, it pops up a little warning screen and it tells me exactly where to go. Calibration required on spectrum spectrometer one, choose experiment, calibrate. So let's go up and choose experiment, calibrate, and we want to calibrate spectrometer one. So let me click that and we do have to let the lamp warm up a little bit, especially for the first spectrum that you're doing because the light that comes out of a lamp is a little bit different when it first starts up than it is when it's had a chance to run for a little while. So let's go ahead and leave that warm up for the 90 seconds that it has to warm up. Okay, we just finished warming up. So now we want to place a blank cuvette in the device. So let's take a look at that. The calibration standard that we're going to use for any experiment is ideally the exact sample that we want to observe minus the colored part. So in this part of the experiment we're just going to use water. So let me fill that up about that far with just plain deionized water. I'm going to give it a little wipe. Be a little careful with these. They can get scratched up. So wipe off those clear faces and insert it into the spectrophotometer. Once that blank is in the device, click finish calibration and it'll take a little read, it'll scan through and calibration is complete. So click OK and now we're ready to actually look at a sample. So let's take a look at that green sample that we've been looking at. Remove the blank. Let's use a colored solution and this solution is pretty dark so let me dilute it out a little bit some green and some water so there's a a nice green sample and again let's give it a gentle little wipe and put it into the instrument one of the nice things about these instruments is that they are instant read so let's click collect and there's the spectrum the whole spectrum is right there instantly and you can see it's moving a little bit that's because it's actually recollecting the spectrum over and over and over and over and over again so we can we can collect spectra pretty easily we can swap out spectra pretty easily um, here you see a little bit of that background causing some trouble. If we really wanted to look at this closely, this red line which represents the spectrum, well, kind of disappears over here. So having that in the background is useful for part of the experiment. If you ever want to turn it off just, just to get it out of the way for a minute, you can turn it off and get it out of the way for a minute. You can always turn it right back on. So there's a sample. The nice thing here is we don't necessarily, if you don't have a reason to print out your graph, and for a number of the experiments in this first week, we don't really need to print out the graph. You can just get some information off of it up here. If you want specific detailed information, you can always go up to the Analyze menu and choose Examine. And that gives you a cursor that you can move along and for example, if I put my cursor right there, it's telling me that the wavelength I'm at is 408.9 nanometers and the absorbance at that wavelength is 0.692. If I move to a different wavelength, this is tracking, this is the cursor on the graph. So anytime you need to pick wavelength or other information off of these graphs always 
do that by going up to Analyze Examine. If you want that to go away, go back up and unclick it and your cursor goes away. For the readings that we're taking for the first part of this experiment especially, you probably never really have to click stop because if you watch the screen, if I take the cuvette out, well, the signal just goes away. If I put a different cuvette in, well, this isn't a different one, this is the same one. But if I put a cuvette back in, the spectrum comes back on the screen. So you can pretty quickly just swap samples out one after the other. Take the readings that you need to take by using Analyze, Examine. And you can even leave that sit in one place if you really want. So there's one sample. That sample goes away. There's a new sample. So for the most part, this is pretty easy. For the couple of spectra that you're going to need to print, let me turn off the cursor, turn off the examine. For the few that you need to print, when you need to print them, go to stop. And when you print them out, always, always, always turn off the draw visible spectrum because that would be a really, really ugly printout. This way the printout is a little bit cleaner. Make sure that you scale things appropriately so that you're filling up the graph area as much as possible and make sure you get any information off of that graph that you might need. Other than that, pretty much it. When you're finished, shut down the experiment, shut down Logger Pro. This is a very important point. Do you want to save changes you made to Untitled? No, you never ever ever want to change Untitled. If you want to save this as something else, save it as something else. Um, but when you close down the program you will always want to select No. and the program goes away. Make sure when you're finished you remove your sample so that it's not sitting there for the next group to come along and that's about all there is to it. One of the most useful things to have around whenever you're doing lab work like this is really just a very large beaker. Um, you're going to have a whole bunch of different little samples that you're going to want to dump out so rather than running back and forth to a sink it's always pretty convenient if you just have a large beaker for these samples, you can mix them, give it a couple rinses, and that cuvette is cleaned out and ready to go. And that's really all there is to recording a spectrum. So we've looked at some of the things that are going to affect our readings. Path length is something that we're not necessarily going to directly explore um, in lab, but it's something that's very important to consider. Make sure you read over the lab procedure, make sure you take the pre-lab quiz in time, and we'll see you all in lab this week to start looking at color. Also, make sure that you remember to bring in your two colored liquid samples. Um, if you don't bring those in, it's going to be kind of hard to do part of the experiment. Have a good week.